virtually. Hallelujah. Let's give up wherever you are. Give a shout of praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, join me as I pray and sing. Lord, Father, great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. You are merciful and righteous in all of your ways. You are high and lifted up. You are high and lifted up. You are a God that is more than enough. Lord, Father, spread us with the corner of your garments. Lord, Father, we lay at your feet in total submission unto you. Have your way in our places. Have your way in our spaces, Lord, Father, God. In Jesus' name, we all shout, amen. I hope y'all ready to praise. I hope y'all brought your dancing shoes. Come on.
praise wherever hey. you want. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah. Father, it feels so good to be in your presence, Lord. To drink of your cup, Father. Your ever-living waters. New Hope. Today, we sing a new song. Today, we lift up our praises and our worship unto the God of the Most High. This song that we're about to sing, it's an original that your worship team had prayed on and sought the Lord. And we came to the scripture of 2 Corinthians 12, 9, where God tells Paul, My grace is sufficient for you. And my power is made perfect in weakness. So all the more gladly we will boast in our weakness so that the power of Christ can rest on us. So, Father, we glorify you with this new song, Lord, and we magnify your name. Hallelujah.
for me, Lord, you are strong. When I am weak, your grace is enough for me. Father, your grace is enough. Your grace is sufficient in all its ways. And Father, right now we sit at the foot of the cross, Lord, drinking of your cup, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for your grace that continues to pour and pour and pour. Your ever-living waters, Father, will never run dry. We thank you, Father, that your power can rest on us. We thank you, Lord, that your power rests in us, Father, that we gladly boast in our weakness because your power is made perfect. Your power made perfect in my weakness so I will boast my weakness so your power it can rest rest on me Father grace is enough for me come on let's lift our voices grace is enough for me Grace is enough for me, Lord, you are strong when I am weak. Lord, we thank you for your strength that is in us, Lord. For your word declares that the joy of the Lord is our strength, Father. So we thank you for the joy that we get to walk around, Lord, smiling ear to ear to know that you are on our side, Father God. And if God is on our side, who dare be against us? So, Father, we walk in the spirit of the Lord. We walk, Lord, joyfully, head held high, knowing that we are heirs to the kingdom, Lord, that you have called us, Lord God, for greater things, Lord God. So right now, Lord, I lift up every heavy heart, Lord God, every situation, every circumstance. We lift it up to you, Father God, because we know, Lord, that you are able to take it, Lord, and turn it around for good, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you turn us around and you set us, set our feet on solid ground, Father God. We know that we can always stand on your firm foundation, Lord, that your word never changes, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord, that if you're the God that delivered Moses, Lord, you are the same God that can deliver us, Father God. So we pray for your miraculous parting Red Seas type of miracles, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, in the city of Las Vegas, in the state of Nevada, Lord God, in the country of the USA, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that you continue to part the seas, Father, that you bring your miraculous work, Lord, that you bring heaven on earth, Father God, as we declare that your grace is more than enough, Lord, we need your power, we need your power, thank you, come on, your power.
Father, we thank you for this time, Lord God. This time that you have called us believers to stand firm in your word. To stand on your foundation that is unshaken. So, Father God, we just welcome you in this place, Lord. We welcome you into our hearts. And we welcome you into our living rooms. We welcome you into our homes, Father. As we lift up praise and worship unto you, Father God. May you be magnified. Magnified in any headline on the news. Magnified in anything we see on social media, Father God. We magnify you. You are bigger and you are greater than it all, Lord God. Father, we pray for your speaker right now, Lord. The word that you have already prepared in him. That, Father God, we know that all he needs to do is be. And your word will flow through your vessel. So, Father, we thank you for the obedience of your speaker who sits before your feet. We know that you have a powerful, encouraging, uplifting word to be delivered today. And, Father, we sit here as the year of 2020 of the open mouth to drink of your cup. So, Father, pour into us. Pour into us, not to our full, Lord, but to an overflow into our families, into our homes, into our children, and into the city of Los Angeles. So, Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the word. We thank you for this time of worship. May it be pleasing to you, Father. We give you the praise. We give you all the glory because you're so worthy. In Jesus' name, we all say amen and amen. My name is Jake, and I am one of your life group leaders. And today I get the honor and privilege of praying for our tithes and offerings. So before we do that, I want you to listen to the announcements that the church has for you. Welcome to New Hope in Action. Thank you for joining us today. Here at New Hope Las Vegas, we believe that every person is valuable to God and to His kingdom. We desire to grow in a relationship with you. So sit back, relax, and see how you can get connected to our church family. Want to stay up to date with all the exciting things happening at New Hope Las Vegas? Well, now you can by downloading our New Hope LV app. You'll have access to upcoming events, sermons, life groups, and so much more. Make sure to hit the gear icon and turn on notifications to receive daily updates. You can also stay up to date by visiting our website at www.NewHopeLasVegas.com. Go ahead and follow us on all of our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at New Hope Las Vegas Official. To partner with us financially through your tithes and offerings, click on the Give portal or icon in your New Hope LV app and our website. And if you're streaming live through Facebook and YouTube, we've pinned a Give link in the comment section below. Just simply click the link and follow the instructions for online giving. Like to write checks? Well, please make them out to New Hope Las Vegas and mail them to 6344 West Sahara Avenue, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89146. We want to thank you for maintaining a faithful and generous spirit during this hard season. Attention youth and parents of youth. Join us every Tuesday at 5 p.m. as your Relentless Youth Ministry will be providing weekly mini services. Follow them on Instagram at relentless underscore youth or by checking them out on our website under the Next Gen tab. Do you hear that? That's the sound of victory, and we want you to be a part of it. Here's how. Hey, New Hope family. My name is Guy, and this is my wife, Cheryl, and we are the directors of Victory Groups. Or V Groups, we like to say, is our church's life group community. At this time, we may be practicing social distancing, but that doesn't mean we should be spiritually distancing. And whether it be in person or virtual, Victory Groups are available for you to learn, grow, and serve in a community with other believers. We understand that life can be hard sometimes, and now more than ever, staying connected has been more essential to our community. That's why we have Victory Groups happening throughout the week. To learn how to get connected to a V-Group, you can visit us on our webpage at newhopelasvegas.com or our New Hope LV app. There you can find information about our V-Group leaders, learn about the V-Group experience, and get instantly connected. We're also on social media. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram so you, we can keep you up to date on what's going on in B-Groups. We encourage you to join a victory group, stay in community, and get winning with your journey in Christ today. For more information about V-Groups or joining a V-Group, follow them on Instagram at victory.groups or check them out under the Get Connected tab on our website. Join today. 
Please join us this Sunday at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 12 p.m. as Pastor Bam Lavao has got an awesome word of encouragement titled, Winning the Fight Over Fatigue. Don't miss out. Then make sure to tune in next Wednesday at 7 p.m. as Pastor Austin Tia looks to keep the momentum going with an uplifting word just for you. Please visit our New Hope LV app, website, or social media to get all the latest information. Get connected today. Well, New Hope, that's all the announcements we have for you today. So if you could kindly join me as we pray for the tithes and offerings. Father God, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for um, everything that you've bestowed upon us, Lord, all the blessings and the provisions and everything that we do, we need daily, Lord. We ask that you just take these uh, tithes and offerings, Lord, and further your kingdom with it, Lord, and do your will, will with it, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, today I get the honor and privilege of announcing our awesome speaker for today. His name is Pastor Bam Lauva. Praise the Lord, family and friends. Welcome to our live stream service. I am so privileged that you would join us out of your busy schedule that you're here tuning in to our live stream service. Welcome. I just want to welcome all our friends and family from all across the world, from the Philippines to Kenya, in Africa, to the Pacific region, the Samoan Islands, even into Australia, to Japan. There's so many people that is tuning in to our live stream. And so on behalf of New Hope Las Vegas, on behalf of the pastoral staff, as well as our leaders and our elders, we just want to welcome you here today. Would you do me a favor, right where you're at, would you please rise on your feet uh, uh, with me today? And, and right now, just begin to kind of uh, uh, saturate the atmosphere, the pocket that you are in, by giving God praises and glory. I want you to yield the atmosphere around your home, around your vicinity, whether you're tuning in from your car, wherever you are sitting at. I want you to yield the atmosphere into Holy Spirit. What do I mean by that? You simply say, Holy Spirit, have your way in this atmosphere. I buy every wicked, vile, and dark spirit that is in this space. I cast it out in the name of Jesus, and I yield to you this atmosphere. I yield to you my tongue, my lips, my thought, my mind. I yield it unto you. Why? Because you are God and God alone. Holy Spirit, you reign. Hallelujah. Come on, right where you at. Just begin to praise God and give him glory and thanksgiving because he is worthy of it all. All right. If you got a friend next to you, high five them and tell them, get ready. Grab your Bible. And let's lift up our Bibles, and on the count of three, let's just declare our faith. It feels good to be in the house of God. Here we go. One, two, three, say it. God is who he says he is. God can do what he says he can do. I am who God says I am. I can do all things through Christ, and God's word is alive and active in me. Amen. If you got a neighbor, high-five your neighbor. If you don't got a neighbor, high-five Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. You still in control. <laughs> you are still God. Amen. 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 What's next? I think this question is being echoed by through through the mouths of, of many people who are experiencing uh, fatigue and tiredness. I have been hearing more people say, "Man, what's next, God?" this week than ever before. You see, the, the phrase or the question, what's next, is really a sign. It's indicative. It's a sign that life and the experiences in it are beginning to take a toll on us emotionally, physically, and even spiritually. You see, the truth is everyone gets tired. Amen. Even you, Superman. <laughs> Everyone gets fatigued. Everyone gets exhausted. But here's the thing. We don't wake up in the morning saying, today I'm going to feel tired. Or today I'm going to work myself to death. Or you don't wake up in the morning saying, today I'm just going to end the day feeling fatigued. No, tiredness and fatigue is just a natural byproduct of us just trying to live life, bruh. And we all get tired. We live in a tired nation right now. We live in a tired country. Why? Because there are so many people out there that are saying, man, what is next? And today, I believe that the Lord has sent me here today to encourage you in the name of Jesus. I know you're feeling tired and fatigued, exhausted because of the circumstances but I want you to know that God is still in control and he still cares about you and he still loves you. You see, the thing about tired and fatigue, if we don't steward it well, we will implode from the inside out. 
Fatigue can be an enemy or a strategy of the enemy to cause you to implode. Well, today I just want to encourage you. I want to speak life into you. I, I just want to love on you today as your shepherd for this moment. I just want to equip you on how we can overcome and how we can beat fatigue. Do you know why I know that we live in a tired nation? The coffee industry in our country is a multi-billion dollar industry. Why is that? Because it caters to tired people. It caters to fatigued people. We run to coffee in order to get a boost of energy. Why we ask you for a boost of energy is because our energies get depleted and diminished just trying to cope through life. Well, today I came here to encourage you and strengthen you in the faith in the name of Jesus. I want to equip you on how you can overcome fatigue and how you can beat exhaustion. The title of today's sermon is called Winning the Fight Over Fatigue. I just want to start off by, by just praying in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the privilege and the honor it is to come before you seeking refuge. And your word says to come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and that you will give us rest. And so, Father God, we come to you for that rest. We come to you for a reset. We come to you for a restart. We come to you for a fresh breath. And so I pray right now, Holy Spirit, use me as your vessel to speak, to minister, to ultimately shepherd your people. I pray for nothing else other than the wisdom to be in tune with you, Holy Spirit, and the wisdom to guide your people to green pastures and to still waters. Have your way right here, right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Well, if, if, if you know me, uh, you know that I'm a gym freak. I, I love going to the gym. I, I love working out. Uh, in fact, working out or exercising is, is one of my fills in, in life. Uh, why do I work out? Why do I exercise? For two reasons. Reason number one, I want to keep my wife. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and reason one, uh, number two is I want to ensure that this body can last in order to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. The Lord gave me a revelation. He said, Bam, you better off alive than you are dead, so please take care of your body. <laughs> and so that's why I work out. Uh, I, I try to, to stay in shape. And the unfortunate thing is that my gym has been closed since COVID. <laughs> yeah. I've cried many days because my gym is closed, and so I don't, I don't get my fill going to the gym. So what I've been doing is I've been, I've been experimenting, praise the Lord. I've been experimenting, and I've, I've been trying out this thing called high-intensity interval training. <laughs> it's called HIT, high-intensity interval training. And really what it is, it's just exercise after exercise after exercise after exercise after exercise after exercise after exercise. After exercise. Then a short amount of, of rest for like 30 seconds and 30 seconds and then exercise after exercise after exercise after exercise after exercise. And then again, just a 30 second rest and then exercise after exercise after exercise. We got this DVD at our house. Uh, I decided to pull it out uh, from the shelf, took off some cobwebs and it's called Insanity. Maybe you've heard of it. <laughs> well, I got to experience insanity this week. And so I dust off the cobwebs. I put insanity in there. And, 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 and it was a high-intensity interval training exercise. And so it was cool. You know, just like all of us, when we start off something, we're like, yay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, God is good. All the time, all the time God is good. Let's go. Let go. Let God. Let's do this, Jesus. And so I started off this, this, this exercise, this insanity program. So we started off with just jogging in place. I'm like, oh. Yeah, God is good. All the time, all the time, God is good. <laughs> Next thing you know, we were doing jumping jacks. Praise the Lord. This is easy. My form was good. I got a smile on my face. My vocabulary was good. I was saying things like, praise the Lord, this is easy. Then we went on to ladder climbs. After ladder climb, then we went into jump squats. No rest now. After jump squats, then we went into burpees. After burpees, you get back up and then you do high knees. After high knees, you go butt kicks. And so you're doing this, and, and I've realized something, that in the middle of my workout, I started to lose form. Huh. I started, my form got a little sloppy. Praise the Lord. Yeah, there was no jumping in the jumping jacks. Let's just say that. It was more like, huh, yeah, let's, 
the burpees turned out into burps. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There was no ladder in the ladder climb. There was none of that. So you see, I started off good, but in the middle of my exercise, fatigue started to take its toll. And when fatigue started to take its toll, I realized a couple of things, that my form was now sloppy, and I started bad-mouthing the trainer. <laughs> Yeah, his name is Sean, and he's, he's on the TV screen. And, 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 and when, 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 when fatigue sets in, uh, I check out from hearing Sean. In fact, I was getting offended at Sean. I was telling Sean, stop yelling at me. In the middle of the workout, Sean would say things like, come on, you could do it 30 more seconds. And I'm like, just be quiet, Sean. Don't talk to me that way. Then I start comparing myself to Sean. I say, Sean, the reason why you got a six-pack and your body looks like that is probably because you live at the gym and you're not a pastor. Because us, Pastor, we do a lot more than just exercising, Sean. Two things in the middle of my workout. When fatigue sets in, sloppy form, and I start cursing the trainer. You see, you could usually tell when you are tired and fatigued by these two symptoms. If you're taking notes, <laughs> the symptoms are these. Bad form and bad vocabulary. Hello, somebody. Bad form and bad vocabulary. I just, I just want to take my, my relationship with Sean, and I'm just going to preach it to you right here, right now. Did you not know that you are in a high-intensity interval training program? Yeah. I mean, January 1, we were doing good. We got a smile on your face. Praise the Lord. God is good all the time, all the time. March came around. Ooh, intensity, covid after COVID, this pandemic hits worldwide now. Guess what? Joblessness, economic breakdown, no paycheck, families moving out of town. They didn't know how to survive. And just when we were about to break out of the pandemic, boom, another exercise. Protests, brutality, murder, looting, robbing, stealing, breaking businesses, breaking into businesses. And just when you think that exercise was done, boom, guess what else happens? Increased number of COVID. And our country is now thinking about returning back to implement more restrictions because the number of infections are going up. And we are in preparation of church opening and it's not opening. And now the governor is thinking about going back to phase one. And in all this high-intensity interval training program, can I ask you this? How's your form? And how's your vocabulary? <laughs> are you still lifting up hands without wrath, praising God? Or are you clenching your fists towards God? Saying, what next? Are you still praising, enunciating, edifying, equipping, building up one another, loving on one another with your words, or are your words cut? Are your words saying stuff? Are you saying stuff like this? Don't tell me what to do. How's your form? How's your vocabulary? It's been one thing after another. It's been one exercise after another. One exercise after another. And in the middle of this thing called life, your form is all bust up. There, there ain't no jumping in the jumping jacks. Nothing but just burping in the burpees. And it reminds me of, of when I was doing my daily devotions, it reminded me of a prophecy of Joel. Joel, Joel. In the book of Joel, chapter 1, verse 4. Now, this is crazy. Let's read this aloud on a count of three. One, two, three, read. What the chewing locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. Whew. What the swarming locust left, the crawling locust has eaten. And what the crawling locust left... <laughs> The consuming locust has eaten. God, what next? Just when we were getting over the chewing locust, the darn swarming locust came. Just when we think we're done with the swarming locust, the crawling locust came. And just when you think you'll beat the crawling locust, the consuming locust came. God, what is next? I think the better question is not asking God what's next. The question is, how's your form? And how's your vocabulary? 
Come on, somebody praise God. I, I, I know I'm, I'm preaching. I'm preaching. I know I'm, I'm preaching. Fatigue can make you sloppy. Are you still lifting up hands without wrath? Are you still keeping yourself pure? How's your work ethics? What are you doing with the stimulus check? Are you paying off that debt? Or are you buying yourself a new car? <laughs> Hello, somebody. I'm just being real. How is your form? How's the form of your marriage? How's the form of your devotions? How's the form of your church attendance? I was telling pastors Kent and, and Austin uh, last week, I said, there is another pandemic that is occurring in Christendom. They said, what is that pandemic? And I said, it's what I call digital church hopping. We are just one click away from attending another church. <laughs> if they don't like what Bam saying, click, click, I want to go attend another church that will tickle my ears. How's, how's your church attendance? How's your tuning in? How's your commitment? How's your form? Are you still lifting up hands without wrath? How's the form of your spending? How's the form of your budget? How's, how's the form, form of your church? How's the form of your worship? Or has fatigue settled in and you just tired and exhausted? How's your vocabulary? Are you trained? Are you cursing Sean? <laughs> Are you saying, Sean, stop talking to me? When I get home and I'm tired, bro, man, my, my daughter will run to me and she'll say, Daddy, I love you. And I'll say things like, I love you, babe. How was your day? I don't want to talk about it. Daddy, you care for me? Yes, I care. Why? Because tiredness and fatigue settled in. How's your vocabulary? Are you regurgitating? the same vocabulary that your environment is saying? How's your form? How's your vocabulary? And if you're that person who's like, man, here, nobody's a superman. We are all susceptible to, to, to have fatigue and tiredness and exhaustion settle in. But we have to steward it well. We have to get our form back. We have to get our vocabulary back. And, and, and so if that is you here today, I just want to thank you because the Lord has an answer for you. Chee-hoo! The Lord has an answer for you. This is how you can beat and overcome the spirit of fatigue, the spirit of tiredness. Number two, win the fight over fatigue by these three things. Remove, rest, and reset. Praise the Lord. Remove, rest, and reset. You know the gospel of Jesus Christ is simple, we're the ones that complicate it. We just keep it simple. Remove, rest, and reset. Somebody say remove, rest, and reset. Let's say it again. Remove, rest, and reset. You do these things, and I guarantee you the spirit of fatigue will, live, will leave you, and you'll be strengthened and empowered and filled. Now, rest and reset, I figured that, you know what, that's a given. I've heard so many sermons about rest and reset. And so honor the Sabbath, make sure you get your rest, and reset is really a natural outcome of you resting. So rest and reset. But today I just want to focus in on that word remove. What do I mean by, by, by remove? you got to remove in order to get refilled. you got to remove in order to win the battle against fatigue. Well, two things come to mind when I, when I think of the word remove. The first is remove you. The second is remove what's on you. Man, I'm preaching. The first is remove you. And the second is remove what's on you. So let's focus in on remove you. Sometimes you have to get off the treadmill. If you are getting tired and fatigued running on the treadmill, <laughs> remove yourself from the treadmill. Which means that there are times where you have to literally remove yourself from the environment that's creating in you bad form and bad vocabulary. You have to literally say, man, I can't hang out with you, bro. The longer I hang out with you, the more my form in praising God turns bad. And the more my vocabulary is going bad. So I'm going to have to remove myself and leave you. If the protests are, calling, are causing you to live below the standards of Christianity, please remove yourself from that protest. If that relationship is causing you to be anything less than Christ, then remove yourself from that 
relationship. Hello, somebody. If media is causing you to be below the standards of Christianity, stop looking at media. Remove yourself from media. You have to literally remove yourself from the environment that's causing you bad form and bad vocabulary. Jesus did it too, man. Jesus, he's a straight stud. He's he's straight hood because Jesus healed many people in the New Testament many different ways. There are ways where Jesus just said it and the person was healed. There are other ways where Jesus, Jesus just laid hands on the person and the person was healed. Other times, Jesus spit in their eyes. COVID. And, then, and, they, got, and they got healed. Well, well, here's a situation where there was a blind man in a town, in a village called Bethsaida. Is it Bethsaida? Yes. And, and let me just, just kind of give you a little bit of information about this village. This is a fisherman's wharf. Bethsaida. So just imagine a fisherman's wharf. Tell your neighbor, it smells like fish. So this is where all the fishermen come in and they, they gut fish, they clean fish, they, they sell fish, they trade fish. So it smells like fish. And, and on top of that, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but do you know that fishermen have a, a certain vocabulary about them? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they talk, now nothing, this, this says, I'm not trying to, 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 to bad mouth construction workers, but uh, <laughs> fishermen have kind of the same vocabulary as construction workers. Praise the Lord, you catch my drip. But I love construction, there's not, nothing bad about construction workers, I'm just trying to make a point. <laughs> so, so fishermen's wharf, Bethsaida, was, was a, 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 a fisherman's wharf, it smelled like fish, and he was surrounded, this blind man was surrounded by a lot of people that, that, that talk like fishermen. Hello. Am I connecting with you? And so look at what Jesus, Jesus sees the blind man. And in the book of Mark chapter 8, verses 22 to 23, the word of God says this. On the count of three, let's read it. One, two, three, say it. Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. He led him out of the town. He removed the blind man from his environment. He led him out of town. Jesus got to physically remove this man. Why? The word of God is always for us. And he's teaching us a principle. Don't follow the crowds. Don't follow the chaos. Don't follow the crisis. Follow the Christ. And Jesus is trying to lead many of us outside of that environment that's causing bad form and bad vocabulary. But many of us are saying, I don't want to go, Jesus. You have to remove yourself from that environment. Remove yourself from the crazy. Remove yourself. Other people call it recreate or go on vacation. But whatever you do, if you are tired running on that treadmill, it's not the treadmill's fault. Remove yourself from the treadmill. All right, so you got to remove you. The other remove is to remove what's on you. You could take Bam out of Samoa, but you can't take the Samoa out of Bam. It's still on me, man. (laughs) And so so you got to remove you, but you also got to remove what's on you. In the, word of, in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, on a count of three, let's read it. One, two, three, read. It says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Man, we, we, in order for us to overcome fatigue, we have to let go of some of the stuff that is on us. Now, I'm going to get all up in your grill. One of the weights that is fatiguing The people of God, one of the weights that is causing the people of God to get tired is the weight of offense. Man, we're surrounded by offended people. And God says, don't take on offense. But what we're doing is we're taking on the offense. Even if it's not our offense, we're taking on other people's offense. We got an offended country. We're offended at our country. We're offended at our president. We're offended at pastors. We're offended, offended at politicians. We're, we're offended at police. We're offended at this side. We're offended at, at, at that side. You, do you know that when you are offended at authorities, you are not offended at those people. You are offended at God. And so your form is not lifting up hands without wrath. Your form is not clenching your fist to God. Because God said to Moses, Moses, they're not doing it unto you. They're doing it unto me. 
And we are living in a society and a community of just offended people. There are more offended people in the church than there are in our communities, which is crazy because the one who we should follow, one of his last words on the cross before he gave up the spirit was, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And that's the spirit that we ought to have. In order for us to lay aside the weight of offense, we have to forgive one another. Do you know what forgiveness is to me? Forgiveness means dropping all charges. Because that's what Jesus did. Each and every one were guilty for the wages of sin is death. But Jesus said, no, forgive them. So he dropped all charges. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And we have to lay aside this weight of offense. There was a story, I'm going to close with this little story. There's a story about a guy named Sione. And Sione went on a jog. And he was jogging on this, this mountain. It had a cliff on the side. And, and, and Sione tripped over his shoelace. And, and he fell over on the cliff. <laughs> and, 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 and in his desperation to, 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 to save himself from falling, he grabs onto a, a tree branch that was hanging out. And he's, he's hanging on this tree branch. And Sione looks down and the cliff is like about 1,000 feet deep. And Sione, knowing that he cannot, the cliff is too steep for him to crawl up, and he cannot climb up by, by, by himself. So Sione starts crying and yelling, help, help, is there anyone out there? Help me, please, help me, is there anyone? I need, I need, I need help, is there anyone out there? And just when Sione was about to give up, he hears a voice, Sione, Sione. I see you. And Sion is like, well, who's there? Who's there? Help, help, I'm down here. Who's there? And the voice said, it's me. I am the Lord, Sione. And Sion said, well, but I can't see you. Where are you at? And the Lord said, I am everywhere. You mean Jesus? That's right. It's Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, I'm so glad that you are here. I'm so glad, Jesus, that you are here. Jesus, could you please get me off of here? And Jesus said, yes, I can. Oh, Jesus, if you can, I promise you this, Jesus. I will never sin ever again. I will be the best saint. I will be the best church attender. I will have the best form and the best vocabulary. And I'm going to be the best servant ever. And Jesus said, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow your roast, Sione. Watch out with all the promises. How about we get you off of there, put you on solid ground, and then we can talk. Sione's like, whoa, thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. And Jesus said, well... Let's get you off from there. You got to listen carefully and do exactly what I say. And Sione said, anything, Jesus. I will do anything. Jesus said, just let go of the branch. <laughs> I got you. You trust me? Let go of the branch? Yeah, just, just let go of the branch. I got you. Do you trust me? And Sione hung there a few moments later. Sione yells again, help, help, is there anyone else out there that can help me? <laughs> Here's my point. We are often tired and fatigued because we're holding on to offense. We need to let go and trust that the battle belongs to the Lord. Vengeance is his. You're not meant to carry that weight. You weren't designed by God to carry offense. You weren't designed by God to take on offense. That's the tactic of the devil. That tactic is straight from hell. He's come to set you free. Let go of that branch. Branch. Let go of that offense. How? By forgiving one another. They may not know what they're doing, but you have the Great power of dropping all charges. Remember, in order to win over the fight against fatigue, remove yourself from the environment that's causing you 
to do crazy. <laughs> and also, remove what's on you. You were designed to be free. Lay aside every weight and every sin that ensnares you. Why? So you can finish the race that God has called you to run here on earth. He loves you. He cares about you. And he wants you, with his help, to win the fight over fatigue. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, thank you so much for, again, allowing me the privilege to shepherd you to green pastures and to still waters. And I pray that you just do these simple things. Remove, rest, and reset. We're in a high-intensity interval training program. The question is not, God, what's next? The question is always, how's your form? And how's your vocabulary? Beat fatigue by removing, resting, and resetting. I can't wait to see a refilled, empowered, Holy Spirit baptized man and woman of God who is willing to finish their race strong. Could you do me the favor and just bow your heads with me? I just want to pray. Father God, thank you so much for this encouraging word that you have um, spoke through Bam <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Your word says, he who has an ear, let him hear. He who has eyes, let them see. And he who has a heart, let it be changed and transformed so that times of refreshing may come in from the Lord. So I pray as I speak into the atmosphere, Holy Spirit, touch every heart on the other end of this sentence. Strengthen the hands that hang low. Strengthen the knees that are weary. Strengthen their body with a second wind in the name of Jesus and cause them to restore their form of praise and their vocabulary of worship. We thank you so much, Jesus, that you love us dearly to help usher, lead, guide, edify, and encourage. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty, precious, and awesome name, amen and amen. Well, family and friends, thank you again so much for joining us here on a live stream service. Hey, don't forget, next, the next week, <laughs> next week, brother, Pastor Austin is going to share with you an awesome word. Please tune in for that. In the meantime, God bless you. God be with you. Let's work on our form and our vocabulary. Remove, rest and reset. God bless you, and we'll see you again next week. Thank you for joining us. Tune in next week on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., and next Sunday, for you early birds, we are going to be streaming at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and then again at 12 p.m. For more information and to stay connected to our church family, download our New Hope LV app, or you can visit our website at newhopelasvegas.com. May God bless you and God prosper you. We can't wait to see you again. In the meantime, keep hope alive.